How's it going, everybody? <sighs> it's another beautiful day in paradise. I've got, uh, I, I'm hoping that this stream will be a little bit better than some of the past ones. Um, not necessarily in terms of content, but just in terms of actually working in one video. <laughs> <sighs> I've had a couple of live streams for those of you who haven't been paying attention to them um, all the way through, which I don't blame you. You know, people are busy. Now everybody can stick around on one of these live streams for two hours. But um, yeah, my last uh, my last two live streams I've had in the middle of the live stream, the audio just quit working. And I have not figured out why that was happening. I have no solution for it. I have no answers. But today... I'm just recording this, uh, streaming this through my laptop's normal microphone. So the audio quality may be a little bit less. Uh, it won't be significantly less, I hope, uh, from the microphone I was using. Um, but it's not going to be as clean and crisp, probably, as it might otherwise be. But I want to do a stream that doesn't die in the middle of it. So let's hope this is that stream. See, you got three people here. I didn't advertise this stream as much as I have the other ones in the past. Um, the last several streams, I've, I've plastered all over every social media group that I'm a part of. Um, perfectly serviceable. That's good enough for me, Zach. I'm glad the audio sounds decent. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the last several streams, I've kind of plastered on every social media platform I could think of. Uh, you know, I put them on, obviously I did the Facebook and, and Instagram on my page, both my page and my personal accounts, but I've also been putting uh, links in every Facebook group imaginable. There's probably 15 Facebook groups I'm a member of, uh, all doing whiskey things. Um, today, I decided to not do that. And I haven't decided if that's just me being lazy or or if I actually wanted to do a smaller, more intimate stream um, or if I just wanted to see who the hell would show up if I didn't post in those groups. Cause I've been posting in those groups, but I haven't gotten huge responses. You know, I haven't seen numbers in the thirties or forties or fifties on these streams. I've been seeing somewhere between five and 15 people, which I'm happy to have all of you here. Don't get me wrong, but you know, the difference between getting five people like who are here right now and 15 people, um, how much time and effort is it worth to get, you know, an extra five or six people in the stream, 10 people in the stream. Those are the kind of decisions I have to make on the margins uh, to keep this account running, keep my, my myself sane, really. Uh, I'm basically working two jobs and this one's for free, but I do it because I love drinking whiskey. And I love being around you guys and being a part of this fun little community experiment that we're putting together. So at the top of the video, if you were here, you saw this little note, Yolanda's secret. What is Yolanda's secret? The contents of these four glasses. I do not know what is in any of these, but I'm gonna find out. But first, I'm gonna taste them. I'll do a proper smelling. I'll do a proper tasting. And I don't know if you can see, I can't read through that. I guess if you really tried, maybe you could, but I'm not trying to, and I'm not able to on first glance. So I think, you know, my, my inner urge for truth uh, would otherwise have me digging into those answers. Uh, but today I'm just going to try to exercise some restraint. Looking at these pores, I'm realizing that... Uh, we got some work to do ahead of us. Uh, first off, they're all beautiful. They're all very rich colors. Um, none of these look particularly light. So I don't expect that any of them contain light whiskey or, uh, or anything like that. I, I'm also sitting in this chair and it's probably making a lot of noise. <laughs> I, I didn't want to stand today. Uh, I'm not super comfortable standing for, you know, multiple hours at a time. But uh, I think if I'm going to do sitting... Uh, if I'm going to sit to do my live streams in the future, I probably need to get a better chair for such things. This chair is comfortable, but not for sitting up straight. Like this is this is me sitting up about as straight as I can in the chair, and I feel like I'm flying backwards. I really should be up and proper like this, but it's very unnatural for me. 
Uh, and I love squirming too. I just, I love dancing about my ADHD kicks in and I'm all over the place. Um, that's why these always take so long to get started too. But uh, thank you all for being here. I'm going to dig into the first one of these whiskeys. And um, the way we're distinguishing these, by the way, is based on the glassware. So this first one has no labels on it. Uh, the second one is one of my Drink Pro glasses, which I'll tell you right now, those are becoming uh, exceedingly rare. I only have maybe a dozen of those left to sell uh, before this batch is gone. And I don't plan on ordering another batch in the immediate future. So if you want a glass, uh, now's the time to buy because they're almost gone. Uh, I've also got the I Drink and I Know Things Whiskey Group one of the Facebook groups I'm a part of. I got a couple of their glasses. This is the first edition glass. And then this was the second edition glass with the dragon on it. And so that's how I distinguish them is that the regular one is just the words and the second one is the dragon. Now this dragon glass is also for sale. I've got more of these than I do with Drink Pro glasses. Um, I, I suspect it's because they're a little bit more expensive, but only $2.50. It's not that much more expensive, but to get the laser etching on both sides, I had to pay a small premium. So if you want some glassware, hit me up. Let me know anywhere you can find it. Uh, find my name. Find my uh, uh, email, The Drink Pro. I'm all over the place. And exciting news, guys. I just today, in fact, bought the domain, thedrinkpro.com. So that's coming. <laughs> I don't know what it'll look like. I don't know what I'm going to put up there. But I was able to buy a whole year for a dollar. So I said, well, hell yeah, I'm going to pay $1 to have the drinkpro.com, uh, my official website. Um, we're losing people. That's sad. Oh, well, they'll come back. They always come back. They don't want to hear me yammer on about all my fun goodness. They want to hear me talk about whiskey. I understand. I am also a little bit lower energy today. Uh, yesterday was kind of crazy. I was drinking with... Uh, at Heavy Bourbon on Instagram, Dan Kidd. Uh, he's in a couple of the Facebook groups that I'm in, and he started doing these things called two o'clock chugs during quarantine. So he was chugging a lot of whiskey, became rather well known for it. In fact, um, there's a limited edition bottle being released with his face on it, Dan Kidd's two o'clock chugs. That'll be coming soon. I'll definitely try to grab a bottle of that. Uh, but because of his namesake, and because of his process, we had chugged a couple of whiskeys. And uh, that takes a lot out of you. That's hard to do and hard to maintain. But uh, sometimes you just got to go for it. Sometimes you got to go a little crazy because, you know, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do. So, but I will say there's also going to be some review videos that he shot with me coming in the near future of some old Carter uh, that were more in line with my typical review process. They're more sipping videos. They're nosing videos, discussing notes. So. There's good stuff coming ahead. Uh, shout out to Dan. Thanks for joining and doing that. That was a lot of fun, my man. But going into this first whiskey here, this is uh, this is uh, the blank, the blank glass. Nothing on it. Oh man, this! I always come into these thinking this is going to be a good idea, and I always really regret it immediately because I don't know what the hell this is. I'm getting a subtle fruit note. Very subtle, but I'm getting some of that like I'm almost getting like a cherry cough syrup and this this very subtle uh, blackberry note. Man. I'm gonna have no fucking idea what this is. Uh, well, how's everybody's night? While I try to figure out what the hell I'm doing here. Let me know what you guys got going on tonight, what you're sipping on. Yeah, I'm getting some vanilla out of this. Vanilla and caramel. Uh-oh. It's <coughs> a way to start it. You know I'm doing a real drinking video when I start sneezing. I mean, the nose... It's a very pretty nose. It's got this wonderful, sweet, soft note. It's not too complex. 
it really smells like Buffalo Trace to me. Um, I don't know if it is or not. There's only one way to find out, but uh, it really smells like Buffalo Trace. I'm going to leave that one there sit for a minute. That was kind of a weird sentence, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually bend this up a little as well. I, uh, I'm kind of sitting up straight, not using the back of this chair, and it looks better if you don't have to see my head get cut off. So Now, this is number two. This is the Drink Pro glass. Again, limited availability. Get one while you can, guys. I have a habit of saying guys when I mean all y'all. So, ladies, you can get some Drink Pro glasses as well. Guys, gals, everyone in between, just buy some glasses. <laughs> oh, man, Dave has been packing up the kitchen all weekend. Enjoy the Henry McKenna, though, man. That's good stuff. Um, if you can find Henry McKenna for the retail, it's, it's definitely worth having on your shelf. Uh, unfortunately, it's been jacked up a lot of places. Henry, Henry McKenna 10 is just becoming exceedingly um, harder to buy for a price that's worth having, in my opinion. Now, some people just love it and are willing to pay 60 bucks for a bottle, but it's a little high for me. I, but if you can get it for 35 to 40, go for it. I think, uh, I think the last bottle of Henry McKenna I bought was 40, and I was pretty happy with it for 40. Now, this is a little bit more minty. Dave found it in Ohio, so it's almost certain almost certain that it's a better price. They're going to have retail pricing out there. So I'd love to know what you paid for it, Dave. These are not terribly different on the nose. 50. Yeah, 50 is pretty standard anymore for uh, McKenna. Um, it feels a little high to me, but, but I know if you want to buy it, that's what you're going to find it at. So, uh, it's one of those things that it's just expectations. You know, you get used to paying $50 for bookers and then suddenly it's a hundred dollars or $80 and it just feels too high. But I think that's probably the going rate these days for McKenna is 50. I will say, I don't think either of these are particularly high proof. They don't smell particularly high proof. Uh, they're both very firmly, I think, in the bourbon world. They're sweet. They're soft. They're gentle. They're actually very similar. And I got to watch out because this is something Yolanda's done to me in the past. Uh, for those who don't know, Yolanda is my girlfriend. Uh, but she has uh, done one of these videos with me before where she gave me, I think, three different pours that were all different versions of Maker's Mark. <laughs> so it's very possible that these two are either the same thing, maybe they're two different store picks of one kind of bourbon. Who knows? She told me today that she picks the bottles out based on the aesthetic of how the bottles look, um, which makes sense. She's a graphic designer. She's an aesthetic person. It's what they're going to do. I'm somewhat aesthetic. I, you know, obviously I'm wearing a freaking colorful shirt and I got these blue glasses. I obviously care about aesthetics, but um, it's not as natural for me. I'm much more uh, hearing based. I hear things very carefully and closely. And uh, you know what my, what my vision can see is usually not very uh, detailed and descriptive. Uh, I'm better with words than anything. Beautiful, warm, sweet. I love the nose on these. These are beautiful. They're gentle. They're delicate, but they're sweet. They're definitely in the bourbon world. Let's go with the Dragon. Again, these are also for sale. I got more of these than I could drink pro. Um, just because they're a touch more expensive, but they're definitely worth it, guys. It's still a hell of a value in my book. Um, <clears throat> okay, now this one is distinctly more peanutty. Yeah, this has got to be a Knob Creek or a Booker's. That just, that just, in the color on it, that's got to be Knob Creek or Booker's. And it's high proof, higher proof than these two. You know, I, I love being this confident and then being proved wrong because it's happened a bunch, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I really think that's probably a Booker's. 
Ooh. Okay, now this one still seems kind of peanutty. Not as peanutty as number three here, but uh, oh, it's got a little mintiness on it. It's got a little bit of peanuttiness, a little bit of mintiness. That's the most different nose. That's just like a fruity. Oh, man. You know, there's no wrong answers when you're smelling whiskeys. It's just a good time. <laughs> It's a good time. Uh, speaking of good times, I've sent out a couple more packages uh, in the mail. I got one more I'm going to send, one more batch I'm going to send tomorrow. Uh, so if, if you've already ordered your glassware, it's coming. It's coming soon. Um, I do think that I'm hoping in the very near future to do a list of um, samples. For some of the Patreon levels, we've got uh, a sampling video that I'm going to do, a special video for patrons, uh, where I'm going to send them uh, a couple different samples, and we can all taste it together. And I won't tell you what they are. You have to watch the stream to find out what they are. They'll just be numbered. Uh, but it's uh, there's a little logistical issue I'm working out with that. A lot of what I'm going to be doing, honestly, is figuring out the pricing, like figuring out what I can afford. I want to make sure I'm getting you guys value for your money, um, but also not, you know, spending more than I'm bringing in. That would not be good. Well, I think the nose on number two might be my favorite. Um, oh, that's so, or this might be a rye. This one, I'm actually going to flip these. So dragon's going on the end just because I feel very confident that it's high proof. I feel very confident it's peanutty. It's got to be non or bookers. And I'm worried that's going to blow my palate for the rest of these. These seem more subtle and nuanced. So put that aside. Uh, I'm going to give myself a sip of water here. Oh, yeah. It's been a fun weekend. Hope you guys have had a fun weekend, too. Been a long weekend, but a good one. Man, now the more I smell this, it's starting to smell bigger and richer and bolder. It might be higher proof I'm giving it credit for, honestly. Like going from the blank glass to the drink pro glass, whew, my nose is itchy. It's a higher proof than I expect. So I'm actually going to try to order these in what I think the order of proof is. And then I'll make guesses, and then we'll look into it. Um, but, uh, man, the distinctions between these pours are becoming more and more prevalent. Um, <laughs> I'm using up all the tables, so you're not going to be able to really see what I'm doing. Uh but I'll let you know. I'll kind of lift them up so you can see. Like the Drink Pro one, I think, is the lowest proof. I drink and I know things is probably second lowest here. That's That's got to be a rye, though. I'm still thinking. Although now, so originally I thought that this, this empty, unlabeled glass was a Buffalo Trace. But it's, it's hotter than that. I'm not sure I agree with that anymore. This Drink Pro one, however... Very well might be a Buffalo Trace. They both have that really soft, sweet, caramel, honey, hints of fruit. That's what I like and look for in Buffalo Trace. This I drink and I know things, though. It's definitely spicier. It's got a rye component. This might actually be the uh, Noah's Mill. Is that Noah's Mill? Yeah. I haven't tried Rowan's Creek. I need to try it at some point. Uh, just never shot... Um, Shot the gun. Jump the gun. Neither of those are the right idioms. Pulled the trigger. That's the idiom. There's too many gun idioms. I've never quite pulled the trigger yet on the Rowan's Creek. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't had anything to drink today, I swear. Yeah, the knob, uh, the Rowan, ugh. There's Rowan's Creek and there's Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill is the more expensive version, higher proof version. I've had it. I have not tried the Rowan's Creek. I'll have to pull the trigger on that sometime soon. Pop the cork, yeah. Well, you're right, Dave. Pop the cork's a great one, but uh, to pop the cork, you got to buy the thing, right? Uh, I haven't bought the thing. 
So uh, I popped the cork on my Noah's Mill, but uh, I haven't even unsealed the foil on the on the Noah's Creek. Rowan's Creek, not Noah's Creek. Damn it. I'll get it right one day. Maybe. Maybe not. Yep. All right. So I'm pretty comfortable with this order in terms of tasting. Um, let's go ahead and give it a taste on this drink pro glass. Now I'll tell you, um, it's been sitting up for a while. I'm getting a little bit of a lemon note, a little bit of berry, a little cherry, definitely vanilla. The color on these is just beautiful. These are all beautiful whiskeys. All right. Mmm. Mmm. So the most distinctive feature of this particular pour is this very distinct, noticeable bitterness um, on the finish. It has a really sharp herbal bitter note mid palate in the finish and although the nose is beautiful uh it's not as sweet on the palate as i expect from the nose you know what this might be this might be the new riff oh it's too quiet I don't know though. I get that that such distinct bitter herbal note at the finish. Um, it doesn't have to be one of these whiskeys behind me, uh, but it could be. I don't know. That's um, that's throwing me off. There's just no sweetness on it at all. It just doesn't have the honey. It, it smells like the sweet notes, the sweet aromatics, but it does not have the fruity flavors or the sweet flavors. It is herbal and woody. Let's try number two. And boy, after tasting number one, number two smells a lot fruitier. It um, Number two here was the one I thought was a rye. And does have some components that make me think it might be a rye still, but uh, we'll see. I like that. Um, I like that more than the first one. It's uh, definitely got sweeter. It, it's a sweeter pour, but also the finish is sweeter, which is interesting. Lighter on the palate. A little bit of woodiness, a little bit of herbalness. The finish. You get that sweet honey... Uh, right through the finish, even with the woody notes, it's really that's really wonderful. Um, and it's got a little bit more heat to it than I anticipated, but it doesn't burn. This one burns. This is herbal and burny, and this one is sweeter, um, but still has more alcohol than I anticipated. Let's try number three here. Let's do some first impressions, and then we might dig a little deeper. Oh, man. See, now this smells like straight-up vanilla after going between those two. Maybe even like a rum finish of some kind. All right, let's taste it. See, that's... <sighs> very sweet, uh, but not particularly complex. And see, while I'm talking about this, I'm just thinking in my mind, like... What do I have that meets these criteria? What do I have that's sweet and not particularly complex? I mean, I hate to say it, but the Blood Oath Pact 5 fits that bill pretty well. And the last time I did one of these, I guessed the Blood Oath and was wrong. Uh, but last time it was one of the Maker's Mark. The only Maker's Mark I have open 
She didn't open a bottle. So the only maker's mark I have open is a private select. That's much better than this. Uh, um, this is fine, but... Uh, That's so, I'm just not picking much up from that. It's super weird. I'm gonna cleanse my palate and go back to it because something weird is happening. See, it's not sweet enough to be rum finished, but it's so quiet. I guess it could be a Buffalo Trace, which is what I thought initially on the nose, but it's so disappointing <laughs> if it is. It's not my jam if it's the Buffalo Trace. Um, and there are some picks from Buffalo Trace that I don't like as much as others. Um, there's one pick over there on the – on the uh, Makers is a particular funk that Dave can't get past. I don't know if I've ever found that funk. I'll have to look for it, Dave. That's a good observation, though. Um, there's a particular Buffalo Trace pick over here on the table, which is one of the places I said she could pull from. Uh, that uh, it could be in this glass, but I don't know. All right, now this is the one I was almost certain was Booker's or uh, Maker's Mark. Oh, no, sorry. Booker's or Knob Creek. Let's give it a taste. That's Booker's. It's big. It's strong. It's oaky. Um, not my favorite Booker's either, I will say. Um, you know what, Daniel Brown, do you like Rare Breed Rye? I've not had Rare Breed Rye yet. I it, I haven't seen it on the shelves locally. I haven't been looking aggressively for it, but haven't seen it on the shelves locally. I haven't picked it up. I would love to try Rare Breed Rye. Matter of fact, if I can find myself a sample and or a bottle of Rare Breed Rye, I'll do a side-by-side -side between the 101 Rye, the regular Rare Breed, and the Rare Breed Rye. I think that'd make a really cool video. So if you see it, let me know. Uh, I've not seen it to this point. This is almost certainly Booker's. I mean, I can get super aggressive and try to guess the batch. I just, I just, that can't, <sighs> Booker's has this very distinct dry woodiness. Um, God, if that's not Booker's, I'm going to be dumbfounded. I mean, what comes from that line? We got Booker's, Baker's, which I don't have any, Basil Hayden, which the only Basil Hayden I have is the Caribbean cask, and that's not going to taste like that. I mean, I guess it could be Knob Creek, but usually Knob Creek isn't that dry. Ooh, I just shook the table and all of the whiskeys moved. Terrifying. They're all sitting on my computer, too, so doubly terrifying. Um, yeah, Knob Creek. I mean, I usually get more sweetness of the Knob Creek smell. It's so woody. I mean, now I'm just looking to see what the hell else it could be. You know what? That could be an Elijah Craig barrel proof. There are a couple of the Elijah Craig barrel proofs that are very, very deep and woody, but um, God, my gut's telling me this is Booker's. I don't know. I don't like it as much as Booker's. Most of the Booker's I've tasted, I've actually quite enjoyed. Um, I like this one fine, but it's not, uh, it's not blowing me away. <sighs> All right, let's go back 
and uh, revisit some of these. See if I can't put some names to these. Well, after coming from the Bookers or whatever the hell that one is, this is just like candy on the nose. Mm. Sweet vanilla, slightly free on the taste. So I think that one... Interesting bitterness at the end. Oh, man. It's easy to look stupid when you do a live uh, blind tasting like this. But that I sure feel like that tastes like uh, that tastes like um, buffalo trays. Soft, sweet, vanilla. Then it goes into the woodiness. There's more woodiness in it than a lot of buffalo traces, but a couple of store picks I know I have that are from buffalo trace are woodier than average. So that could definitely fit into that paradigm, maybe. Maybe or maybe not. Let's try. Let's actually go back to this blank glass. Now, this was initially the one in my first position, but I moved it because it seemed like it was higher proof. Daniel Brown, which one do I like the best? Good question. I think it's this one. Blind tasting, this is my favorite, the one in the blank glass. Um, it's pretty unoffensive, which usually isn't like a great ringing endorsement for me. Um, but, but you know, so much of drinking is, oh, geez, shaking the table. So much of drinking is your mood. You know, it's what are you trying to taste today? What are you looking for at that moment? And I think right now I'm not in a big woody mood. And all three of these have more wood flavors going on than this one. This is the least woody. Uh, so it's hitting the right notes for me right now. But I do know I've been in moods where I just want the woodiest, most astringent thing I've got. Man, uh, they can't. She, there's no way she did two Buffalo Traces. There's no way. But boy, I feel like that's Buffalo Trace. All right, let me taste. Let me taste this one again. The Drink Pro glass. There's an herbal note to that that isn't normally in Buffalo Trace. Oh, what could it be? It's not Woodford. I don't think it's Four Roses. <clears throat> man, that's tricky. Oh, man, this is going to be a mess. <laughs> okay, let's do the I Drink It, I Know Things original group class. That's very quiet, very unoffensive, very unassuming. It's hard to pick up anything out of this. The notes are just kind of muffled and quiet. This could be one of those low proofers. This could be something around 80 proof or so. But I don't have a lot of bottles that are at that proof. It's just like drinking water. It's freaking weird. I'm going to sit with this one for a little bit, see if I can't pull something out of it. Um, in the meantime, I'll tell you guys, um, if you're not part of the Patreon, you definitely should be. Not just because I would love your support, which I would. Not because I need your support, which I do. But because there are some really cool benefits that I've added uh, this month. One of them, 
I've already talked about earlier in the stream is the uh, sample videos I'm going to be doing probably every quarter. Uh, that's the play at this point is every quarter I'll send out some samples to all the members of the Patreon at that level or above. I'll do a, a special video for you guys <clears throat> where I do a tasting with those samples and we can coordinate to make sure you guys will not miss it. Yeah, it does seem like that, Daniel. It does seem 80 proof. And I only think I have one or two on the shelf or 80 proof. Um, I avoid those a lot. And most whiskey companies have realized people don't want them on their higher end products. And I don't usually buy the lowest end um, with the exception of a couple of bottled and bond. Uh, I definitely buy Mellow Corn, which is bottled and bond. I definitely buy Evan Williams bottled and bond, very old Barton bottled and bond, uh, old Forrester bottled and bond. They have an 86 proof, but I don't go for that one. So Typically, if it's going to be under 100 proof, it's a higher end and it's going to be a scotch or something that they're doing, they're doing a specific thing with. So Old Forester has some, uh, I think the Statesman is 95 proof, um, things like that. Uh, 93, I think, is Blanton's proof. So things, you know, I, I tend to avoid, though, the 80 proofs as well. This is starting to open up a little, though. I'm starting to get some sweet corn on the nose. Yeah, JTS Brown, Bottled and Bond. Daniels, that's a good point. I am really wanting to do a Bottled and Bond back-to-back -back with a couple of different whiskeys. That'll probably be a live stream in the near future. Um, got the Mellow Corn, got the Very Old Barton, got the Evan Williams. JTS Brown is one I would definitely like to add. I'll have to keep my eyes out for that because I've heard a lot of people uh, say it's pretty solid. And, you know, as much as I like drinking the expensive, ridiculous pours, um, <laughs> that hurts my wallet, man. I can't do that forever. Uh, I've got to drink some stuff that's more affordable uh, for my government salary. Yeah, now we're getting there. The vanilla is really coming out again. Vanilla, caramel, a hint of spice. Not rice, spice like a cinnamon baking spice. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm actually just trying to breathe through one nostril, which that side is a lot more clogged than this side. So, and actually, so this is a fun thing I've learned that you actually typically dominate one nostril or the other when you breathe. Most people don't breathe evenly through both nostrils. So when you're smelling a whiskey, uh, the day that you're breathing can, can have a big impact on your smell and your taste because sometimes you can breathe more through one nostril, sometimes it'll be through the other nostril. Today, I'm breathing out of my left one, but I know just a couple days ago, I was breathing almost entirely out of my right one. Weird stuff, but true. And when I do that, I get a lot fruitier notes out of this. God, that's so quiet. There's so, so little for me to pick up on. I got to think what my quiet whiskeys are. I spend so much time in the big bombastic world of loud whiskeys. I don't know that I know offhand any particularly quiet pours I've got on the shelf. Um, God. The Old Forester Statesman is 95. Or maybe 93. I don't know. It's a lower proof. That's below bottled and bond. I usually keep that on the shelf. Um, but this doesn't taste like that. That's so much sweeter than this. This is sweet aromatics, but it doesn't taste that sweet. It's almost got a wild turkey note. But, it, but it's not sharp enough. Wild turkey has more oomph, more grain oomph to it than this. Man, this is a tough one, guys. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Let's go back to the one I think is my favorite in the lineup, which is this uh, empty or unlabeled. It's not empty yet. This, un this, this unlabeled, not empty yet glass. Everything except for the weird bitter herbal note at the end of this makes me think all day this is 
Buffalo Trace. Um, that's just that's just gotta be that's just gotta be Buffalo Trace. But then, but I didn't I already say didn't I already say that this one the drink pro glass was Buffalo Trace? I think I did. I think I'm wrong about this one. Mm -mm. No, I want to taste it. No. It has a wonderful, rich sweetness. God, I think that, uh, if that's not Buffalo Trace, I don't know what it is. Well, I feel like I've got two of these I'm pretty comfortable with. I'm very comfortable with the Drink Pro glass being Buffalo Trace. I'm very comfortable with the Dragon glass being um, uh, Booker's. I mean, it could be Knob Creek, but. Uh, I do have a Weller SR. I do, Daniel. But I don't know that it's open. And I don't think Yolanda opened any bottles uh, on her own accord. I want to know her secrets. Gotta figure out her secrets. I'm failing at it right now. Definitely thinking. I'm going to change my answer on this one. I know I've been saying Booker's just with some confidence, but uh, I got to go back to Knob Creek. Booker's is hotter than this typically and more and less astringent than this typically. So it's Booker's or Knob Creek. I'm going to go with Knob Creek. Um, I'm not going to try to guess which store pick. I've got a bunch of store picks. That's just a bridge too far. I just can't do that right now. Oh, there's a sourness to this. The nose on this, uh, this is the I drink and I know things. The nose on this is sour. Yeah, yeah, Dave, I definitely was thinking Eagle Rare, but the thing is, I don't have Eagle Rare on the shelf right now. I'm going to get some here in the near future, but um, I currently don't have any Eagle Rare at all. And so it can't be Eagle Rare, even though it... it Totally seems like it would be Eagle Rare. That was my first thought, but then I went, no, 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 no. Heck, that's not Eagle Rare. I don't have any. The one that tastes like nothing, Daniel, is the one I was thinking is Weller SR. <laughs> because that has a very, like, un, uh, unoffensive, ununique... <laughs> <laughs> it's just very right down the middle of the road. I've got a Weller SR review coming in the near future that uh, uh, kind of lays that out. All right, come on now. Man. Yeah, maybe, you know what, I haven't had just regular Woodford in a while. Um, Daniel, it could be could be something happening here. Is there some Woodford that I'm just not used to? <sighs> They're so similar. It's driving me crazy. Okay. Let's just let's just I'm just gonna go instinct. We're just gonna quit overthinking it. Straight up instinct. Here we go. All, all four of them. We're going to start with the uh, drink pro glass. What does instinct dictate? Instinct is hard. I 
So I don't think this is one. The Drink Pro glass is not one that's behind me. Um, I'm looking at the ones that are on the table. I don't think it's one of those either. I think it's one in the cabinets. Um, man. With that kind of... That's fair. That's fair, Daniel. Um, I will definitely give a final ranking. Um, I just like to try to guess the name of the bottle. <laughs> the um, It's got an interesting sweet, almost sour mid-palate. Sweet front of the palate, sour mid-palate. Definitely woody and nutty on the finish, um, but it's it's it doesn't linger. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and try to make a guess on that. Uh, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that it's um, I'm trying to run through my bottle collection in my head. That might be the uh, French Lick. I'm gonna say that's the spirit of French Lick. Oh, man, Dave, if she bought me something and snuck it in, that's some next-level shit right there. She might have. I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. She's uh, she's tricky. <laughs> she might have done that. Okay. Blank glass. Right off the bat. I prefer that to the Drink Pro glass. I love the Drink Pro glass, but I prefer it to what's in the Drink Pro glass. Um Ooh, lingering cherry note. Lots of vanilla, lots of cherry. It's very fruity. It's very sweet. It just really does a lot for me. I really like what's happening there. And there is still a woodiness, but it's it's quieter. It's more of a nuttiness, really, in the mid palate and finish. Um, but if you kind of smack your lips a little, you get almost like a like a peanut shell kind of quality. Okay, let's do the I drink and I know things glass. It's so fucking weird. It's so weird. It's so quiet. I mean, I have to make that the lowest one because it tastes like nothing. Like, the nose is great, but the flavor is just off the charts nothing. I hope that's not something expensive or something I think I like. That's just going to fucking warp my whole perception. I wasn't ready for that today. <laughs> oh, man. I literally can't find any notes in that. That's so weird. <laughs> What do I have that I can't find notes in? I'm going to say that's mellow corn. I don't think it it is, but it's got this like dusty quietness. It's not as sweet as mellow corn, though. It's not Blanton's. Yes, no, I totally agree, Daniel. Tastes like nothing is not good, and it is on. Uh, it's it's low on my scale. It's the lowest right now. <sighs> I mean, what could I even fucking be? I get the slightest hint of oak and grain. I, I think I'm going to go with... Um, God. Mm, 
I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um, what is in my decanter, which I don't know if she knows what that is, but what's in my decanter is uh, very old Barton 100 proof, the bottle of bond. I it's you know part of the reason I put it in my decanter is it's quite cheap, but it's also quite unoffensive. It's just very neutral. I get a little bit of woodiness, a little bit of nuttiness, and that's it. Uh, maybe a hint of grain, and that's kind of what I'm getting off of this. Um, who knows? And then finally, Dragon. It's hot. Hint of sweetness. Immediately goes into the woodiness. It's astringent. God, I'm going to Booker's. I, I, I thought I was going Knob Creek all the way, but I'm going to go back to Booker's because there's only... I have not had many Knob Creeks that were that astringent. I've had a couple of Booker's batches that I know are still on my shelf there that are rather astringent so i think that might that's it's not great it's not one of my the blank one's definitely first yeah it's number three so a blank one's first green pro second dragon is third and i drink and other things is fourth you're totally right, Daniel. Blind is best, man. Marketing and labeling and stories and history and all that bullshit make all kinds of effects on your palate. And you don't really find out what you're looking for until you do it blind. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a fun story. Before I open up Yolanda's secret, I'll tell you, I was speaking with a store owner. I won't tell you which one locally here in Indianapolis, um, who was telling me that they went down to Kentucky and did a store pick at, um, it was a Knob Creek store pick. And they had several barrels put out for them to try. And they specifically said, don't give us any information on the barrels. We're not going to look at any information on these barrels. We don't want to know what's going on with them. And they tasted all four of them and they picked the one they liked the best. And they found out that it was significantly younger than the other three. And Knob Creek in particular has had a real boom in their 15 year plus store picks. I've seen a lot of 15 years. I've seen a couple 14 years. I've seen even a couple 16 years. People are going crazy for the high year statements on the Knob Creek store picks. And the fact that they picked one that was, I want to say it was like 12 or 13 years compared to several other 15 years. They would never in a million years have picked that except they did it blind. Blind is best. It really is. If you don't know if you like something or if you think you like something and you want to make sure, have somebody else pour it for you with a couple others and try them blind. Specifically, if you can get them close like these are, these are all relatively close. I mean, there, there's some variation, I'm sure, but, you know, these are not like one bourbon, one scotch, one rye, one freaking, you know, Japanese. No, these are all bourbons or high rye. They're either bourbons, high rye bourbons, or low rye ryes. So without further ado, right, that's right, Dave. They're not all that great. Let's find our answer key here. Okay. So the blank one, which is my favorite one, I'll wait and tell you later. The dragon one, oh, I bounced back and forth and back and forth on this, and I landed on Booker's, and the answer is Knob Creek. This is Knob Creek, the cap and cork pick. Was not my favorite pick when I did the Knob Creek lineup. Remains not my favorite pick. It was third in the lineup. It's just woodier than I want it to be. The Drink Pro Glass. Oh! Oh! The Drink Pro Glass is E.H. Taylor Small Batch. Yeah, I can see it now. I think I said that that was Buffalo Trace. And it's Buffalo Trace line, but it's not a Buffalo Trace product. So that makes total sense. Makes total sense. Um, the I Drink and I Know Things group, the one I said was the worst. Oh, wow. The Russell's Tenure. 
Now, if you had asked me if I liked Russell's tenure or not, I would have said I liked Russell's tenure. I would have said that you put a Russell's Reserve 10 up here and I will enjoy it. But, um, you know, it's funny. I think I actually said I thought this might be Wild Turkey. Looking back, I think I was like, this sound, This is like a Wild Turkey product, but it's too quiet and muted. And that's why, is it's Russell's Reserve. It's the mellowed out version. The 10 year is more mellow than the 101. Because I know what I've got in my shelf. In the Wild Turkey products, I've got the Rare Breed, I've got the 101, I've got the 101 Rye, and I've got Russell's Reserve store picks that are barrel strength in the 10 year. This is the most mellow Wild Turkey I've got. That, that you know what, you know, as although I ranked it last, I mean, we're talking about E.H. Taylor. We're talking about, um, what was the other one I mentioned? We're talking about Knob Creek Store Picks. We're talking about E.H. Taylor. These are heavy hitters in the whiskey world. The 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 Russell's Reserve of these four, I'll tell you because I already know what's in the clear one. I haven't told you guys yet. But of all four of these, the Russell's Reserve is the cheapest pour. Um, so it's not that surprising that it was my least favorite. I am surprised by how little I got out of it, how quiet all the notes were. That that Russell's Reserve 10 may have been on the shelf for a while, so I may need to get a new bottle because uh, it may have lost some of its character over time. Finally, the blank one, the one I thought was a Buffalo Trace store pick, this is Weller Antique 107. And because there's no label on it, it's the regular ass Weller Antique 107. It's not a store pick. So my order was Weller Antique 107, followed by, I had to look back at the label, Weller Antique 107, followed by E.H. Taylor Small Batch, followed by the Knob Creek uh, Captain Cork pick, followed by the Russell's 10-year. I'm pretty comfortable with that with that selection, to be honest with you. Um, those are all, all have relatively similar profiles. They're all bourbons. Uh, the proofs are all pretty close, except... Um, you know, the Knob Creek is kind of a standout, but if you go in proof order, you got Knob Creek at 120, you've got 107 at 107, and then the Russells and the uh, and E.H. Taylor are both in the 90s, I think. Um, and in terms of rarity, I'm pretty sure I put them in order of rarest to least rare, which is interesting. The 107 is the hardest to get in Indiana. Uh, not everywhere, but the 107 is the hardest to get here. E.H. Taylor Small Batch is probably second hardest. Um, Knob Creek Store Picks, third hardest. And Russell's 10 years on the shelf everywhere. I'm really happy with that, guys. You know, the last time I did one of these, I was not happy at all. I felt like I had just totally missed the boat. I couldn't figure out what was what. It was a total shit show. Um, but I'm pretty comfortable with picking out the Weller 107 as my preferred of those four. Um, there weren't any Buffalo Trace store picks. Uh, that surprises me a little. But the E.H. Taylor small batch really does um, have the sweetness, the softness. It reminds me a lot of a Cedar Buffalo Trace, which is not actually really a compliment to it. Um, Standard Buffalo Trace and even Buffalo Trace store picks are not $50 retail. E.H. Taylor small batch is $50 retail. So it, I've always kind of felt like it was overrated. Um, but it's good for what it is. It's just not worth, uh, you know, 70, 80 bucks on the secondary market. It's not worth $50 retail in my opinion. Um, the antique 107, I think I bought that bottle for too high. I think I paid 65 for it probably, which is high, uh, to me, but, uh, I really enjoyed it. And so I'm not mad about it. Captain Cork pick. What can you say, man? Sometimes those Knob Creeks are just too, too much. There's too astringent. You get 15 years under the barrel, and some of them are not going to be as good as others. Um, and the, 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 the real surprise, though, is the Russell's Reserve 10. Um, Uncle Dave, are E.H. Taylor and Buffalo Trace the same mash bill? I think so. So there are two major mash bills um, from Buffalo Trace. There's the mash bill... There's a high rye and a low rye mash bill, essentially. Um, and I can never remember which is which, but one mash bill is made up of Ancient Age, Blanton's, Rock Hill Farms, Elmer T. Lee. Um, 
something else. And then pretty much all the others <laughs> that aren't weeders or rise are the other mash bill. Um, so yeah, I believe they're the same. Oh, benchmark. Yeah, benchmark. Um, but uh, yeah, I should really keep those in the back of my mind. I should remember offhand all the different Buffalo Trace products in, the, in their, their mash bills. Um, it's hard to keep track of all of them. They're all kind of the same. <laughs> That'll piss some people off. <sighs> Buffalo Trace is a master of marketing. They figured out a great way to sell five or six different brands that are very similar um, and, and, and call them different products. Now, I won't say they're not good. They are good. They make good whiskey. And I've done a blind of all of the mash bill that I just listed the, the, the uh, whiskeys from. I've done a lineup where I just tasted every whiskey in that mash bill and i put them pretty close the other one i was thinking of was hancock's hancock's reserve that was the other one i was thinking of um when i did that mash bill lineup uh i you know i found that pretty close to what they thought uh what they said was the best was what i said was the best rock hill farms was number one uh and then i think i ended up going rock hill farms e.h taylor Blanton. No, I'm sorry, not each other. Rock Hill Farms, Elmer T. Lee, Blanton's, then Hancock's Reserve. I really didn't care for the Hancock's Reserve. At least the one we had was not very good. And then the lower end ones. Um, Daniel says he'll take Heaven Hill over Buffalo Trace. Um, that's fine. There are some very delicious Heaven Hill products. Um, I, I have not dug as deep into Heaven Hill as I would like to. Uh, I've had some some really good Heaven Hill stuff. I've had some of the best whiskey I've ever had is from Heaven Hill, um, but it's not. Uh, I'll say it's it's special releases. There are some very special releases coming out of Heaven Hill uh, that are wonderful, um, that are very hard to get your hands on. Um, you basically have to know somebody to get them, and that's the kind of thing that. Uh, you know, really will blow you out of the water. But uh, as, in terms of their just standard product line, I haven't had um, a lot of time to, to, to dig into all of the Heaven Hill products. Matter of fact, I can't name very many Heaven Hill products off the top of my head. That's mostly because I haven't lived and breathed them as much as Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace, for better or worse, makes up a huge part of the bourbon market and a huge part of the tater market. There's a lot of people that are wanting to buy bourbon to flip it, that want to watch YouTube videos of me drinking shit, that are only interested in Elmer T. Lee. They only want Blands. They only want Rock Hill Farms. They only want some of the shit I've been listing. They only want the tailor. Show me that you have the amaranth. Everybody wants the amaranth. Everybody wants 18-year marriage. I get it. I understand Buffalo Trace is one hell of a marketing entity. Uh, a lot of the major whiskeys coming out of that company are named after marketers and not distillers. I'm talking about uh, E.H. Taylor. I'm talking about George T. Stagg. Those are named after uh, marketing people. Um, yeah, Daniel, I, I, yeah. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is, is really solid. I, I have had a lot of time with those. I, I think I forget a lot of times that that's a Heaven Hill product, um, but you're right. Like That's some serious, delicious Heaven Hill. Um, Going back on all of these whiskeys, uh, knowing what they are now, I really wonder how much that will affect my, my opinion of them. Because you'd like to think it won't. You know, you'd like to think that when you taste something blind, uh, you're going to feel the same way as when you taste it with some knowledge. See, I already like both of those better than I did before. I'm going my bottom ranking to my top. So I already like the Russell's Reserve 10 and the Captain Cork store pick of Knob Creek better than I did the first time. Marketing and branding, man, they have an effect on your brain. Even if you don't want them to, even if you don't want to believe it happens, you can't help but do it. Yeah, Wild Turkey, Old Forester, Van Boy from Uncle Dave. Um, the Master's Keep collection of Wild Turkey is freaking amazing. I've had a lot of Wild Turkey products. I really like Rare Breed. I really like 101 Rye. I like a lot of things Wild Turkey does. But 
after tasting the master's keep collection uh everything else kind of feels like a step down um hard to get your hands on i know matter of fact i got a sample of the 17 year bottle and bond i wanted to get a bottle but that's fine i got a sample cheers to john warner good friend uh helping out a brother um gonna do a review of that at some point in the near future but uh wild turkey does some great stuff old forester is is one of my favorites um I think Old Forester may be the, my biggest fanboy uh, lineup because just everything from that Luxro series or, um, uh, the, you know, all the numbered whiskeys from, from Old Forester. I think that's not the right name of the series. I can't recall it right now, though. They have the 1920, the 1910, the 1897, the 18 whatever. Uh, all of those are just wonderful to me. And that doesn't even get into the present choice, which I've never had the fortune of tasting. Um, and the old Forrester birthday bourbon, which I have had the fortune of tasting the 2018 and the 2019. I love them both. I'm really hoping I can get my hands on the 2020 uh, old Forrester birthday bourbon that whiskey row. Thank you, uncle Dave. That's right. Whiskey row series Lux row. That's a whole other brand. The whiskey row series is fantastic, but uh, old Forrester, everything they make, I, I tend to like uh, matter of fact, pro tip, if you're making old fashions or mint juleps, old Forrester bottled and bond is my go-to. Uh, it makes a hell of uh, mint julep uh, in particular. I usually go mint julep over old-fashioned. I like the mintiness. Um, although I think that's something I'd like to do a video with is make like five old fat or five mint juleps and use five different bottled and bond whiskeys, figure out which one I like the best. Um, but my gut says that the old Forester 100 proof was just really doing it for me. Yeah, and see, I like that E.H. Taylor less. After knowing what it is, I like the E.H. Taylor less. Branding is is amazing. It gets such a hold on my brain. Daniel says he's sipping the uh, uh, Russell's Reserve single barrel. Yeah, some of those single barrels are amazing. Uh, the Russell's Reserve single barrel program is really good. Finally, Weller Antique 107. That's so interesting. I like that still the best, I think. Um, but I wouldn't rank it as high now, uh, knowing what they are. Uh, come on in. I've got a visitor. Sorry. No, you're busy. Did you feed the dog? No. Okay. The dog needs to eat, apparently, because it doesn't drink bourbon. Yeah, I normally drink neat as too. Uh, Daniel, I normally drink uh, bourbon neat as well. Um, I think usually when I'm doing a mint julep, it's like derby time. It just feels right. Uh, and when it's super hot outside, you know, if it's hot, if it's like midday and I'm outside reading a book or working in the yard or whatever, it's hard to go for a neat whiskey and a Glencairn for me. I, I like a mixed drink. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'll go with just honestly like a bourbon with a big rock, a big circular cube, uh, but something cold. Um, you know, a lot of times people used to do whiskey, ran away from it. But on a hot day, it's not a bad option. Um, that's sort of blasphemous from a lot of like whiskey heads. But um, I know for a fact that the, the Booker No would do that is Kentucky tea. It was four parts whiskey and one part water. And he was using barrel proof whiskey. But if you water that down four to one like that, it's still not going to be fucking 40%. So find the way you like it and drink it how you like it, guys. Um, and don't be afraid to experiment with it. You know, if you if you are usually drinking barrel-proof whiskeys, um, neat, and that's all you're, you're really feeling, put one of those barrel-proof whiskeys in a Manhattan or something because they can hold up. Barrel-proof whiskeys can hold up to cocktails, and you're still getting that full, proper whiskey flavor off the spectrum. See what happens if you water it down. My connection is unstable. I didn't get an unstable connection until an hour and 10 minutes in. That's good, at least. I've been fighting those all the time, too, as long as well as my audio problems. So, but yeah, I mean, there's so many cool things you can do with whiskey. I highly recommend you experiment with them. Um, I'm going to taste them all once through again, just to see if I really 
would change the order knowing what they are or if I would stick with this order. Interesting. So these are very close. <clears throat> the E.H. Taylor small batch and the Weather Antique 107 are very, very close to me. Um, I might actually put the Russell's Reserve ahead of that Captain Cork store pick. It just was not my favorite store pick. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think I really want to give the Russell's Reserve more of a chance than I gave it. It just didn't taste like anything compared to these others. And I just shat all over it. That'll happen. That'll happen when you're drinking, uh, you know, some really high quality, hard to find whiskeys. And then um, you drink something that's always on the shelf that's $20 cheaper. It, it's hard to keep up. It's hard to compare. Otherwise, just because I know what it is, I know the price point. Yes, yes, Daniel, the, the Kansas City, or the Kansas City, that's where I'm at today. The Knob Creek uh, single barrel was last because it is an off pick for me, in my opinion. Um, the pick is just not well balanced. It's way too woody. Um, it, it does not fit what I want from a Knob Creek. Um, not at all. Uh, which is, you know, and Yolanda could not have known that. Yolanda just picked random bottles on the shelf. So she picked one of the store picks, didn't know which one it was. If she had brought out some of these others that I have up here, they may have won. It may have been first place. Uh, but this off, this is really an off pick. I will say also, though, just to give it a little bit more credit, like I'm not looking for a deep woody whiskey tonight. That's just not what I'm feeling. It's not my mood. And like I said earlier in the video, mood has such an effect on what you want from a whiskey and what you're going to pick and what you're going to enjoy. Um, the last thing I would pour myself tonight if I wasn't doing this video uh, would be a Booker's or a Knob Creek or any of the woodier picks, or even like the even the very good ones, the Stag Juniors, the 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 Stag George T Stags. And those are fantastic picks. And if I just had unlimited resources of those, I probably wouldn't pour them tonight for myself because I'm just not in that kind of a mood. Mood matters, setting matters, marketing matters, expectations matter. Flavor is a complex, nuanced, and fickle experience. Uh, figure out what you like, enjoy it. Um, yeah, just poured 1792 foolproof, probably my favorite bottle. Daniel, I totally get that. Um, I will say that some of the 1792 store picks that are foolproof are literally some of the best whiskey you've ever had. Um, there's some amazing 1792 foolproof store picks out there. I haven't had a lot of side-by-sides with the 1792 foolproof, but I did enjoy the taste I've had of it. Um, it's worth exploring, figure out what you love and just keep doing it. Uh, I, uh, you know, I have been doing two hour streams most of the time. I think tonight uh, I'm going to cut it a little short based on uh, uh, the raucous activities of yesterday and my, uh, you know, a little bit more relaxed demeanor tonight. I think it feels like a good night to sort of slow down um, have some time with Yolanda. Thank her yet again for, Establishing this wonderful little uh, experiment for me. She uh, she actually also wrote, sorry for the heavy pour on the E.H. Taylor small batch, which I think is really cute because a heavy pour is always a good thing in my mind. <laughs> so um, apologizing for that is nonsense. And I will make sure she knows that and give her a big kiss. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Keep drinking like professionals. I'm sure I will. Um, let's do this again next Sunday. How about that? Let me know if you want to see a specific review, if you have a specific idea for a, um, a live stream. Just shoot me an email, thedrinkpro at gmail.com. You can hit me up at any social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I'm not very active on Twitter, but I'm starting to get into it. Um, I'm looking to open up, uh, you know, as many channels of communication as possible. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I think you can even like comment on this video after I post it or comment on a different video. If you see something, you're like, Hey, you should do this with that pour. That's fine. 
just hit me up any way you can. I'd love to uh, engage with all of you. Thank you all so much again for watching and being part of the Drink Pro community. You are all the drinking professionals. I will keep drinking like a professionals. I'm going to have a good night, Dave. You do too. Everybody have a good night. Cheers. <laughs>